brought to the heaven all. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father. Beseech you him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord.
Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is the reign of the with the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. He said other 
king was angry. He sent his troops and destroyed those murderers and burned their city. Then he said to his servants, The wedding feast is ready, but those invited were not worthy. Go therefore to the main roads and invite to the wedding feast as many as you find. And those servants went out into the roads and gathered all whom they found, both bad and good. So the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to look at the guests, he saw there a man who had no wedding garment. And he said to him, Friend, how did you get in here without a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Then the king said to the attendants, Find him hand and foot, and cast him in to the outer darkness. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. This is the gospel of the Lord.
Tech for Day's invitation comes to us from the Old Testament lesson. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well aged wine, of rich food full of marrow, and aged wine well refined. This is the word of the Lord. You see, these words read by Isaiah the prophet on the inspiration of the Spirit. You find the means what this quotation is the best. You and I, we all know the best of the best that we encounter. It. The best of foods, the best of wine, the best of music, the best of literature and poetry, the best of art and sculpture, painting, and in drawing. We know the best of the best when it comes to clothes. Those that feel good. Those that look really good on us. We all know the best of the best when we encounter it. And yet as we consider the best of the best, there is one best better than all the rest. And that's our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He is. He will always be. This brings us to the gospel lesson for today. In the gospel lesson for today, we find our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ teaching us about the kingdom of heaven in the parable of the wedding banquet. So there was this king. He had a son. The son was about to get married. And the king loves to party. The king loves to celebrate. The king loves rejoicing. So the king has decided he's going to prod this great big wedding banquet for his son. He sent his servants out to the people of his kingdom. And twice they extended invitations to the people of the kingdom to attend the wedding banquet. Twice the invitation was refused. The second time was the worst. The king had promised that he would provide everything. And as he provided everything, he would provide the best Padded calves, the best wine, the best music, the best celebration, the best rejoicing. And the people refused, and the excuse they gave was an excuse of time. We got people to see places to go and things to do. We got farms that gotta be farmed. We got businesses that gotta be business. We have money to make. We just don't have the time. We're not going to the wedding banquet. And the others, they <coughs> seized the servants who extended the invitation, and they beat some of them, and they killed others. And the king was enraged. The king was angry. <coughs> because he would provide everything, and the best of the best, and most especially, the way they treated his servants that extended the invitation. They beat some, and they killed others. So in his anger, the king sent in the troops. And the troops, they put to death the murderers, and they scorched the earth. They burned their city to the ground, and destroyed every one of them. But the king still wanted a celebration. The king still wanted a banquet. So the king said to the servants, go out to the highways and the byways, Go out to the very fringes and the outer limits of my kingdom and invite everybody, both bad and good, rich and old. And they did. And now the wedding hall was filled with all these people. And the king again provided everything, provided the best of the best, the best of the foods, the best of wines, the best of music the best of celebrating and rejoicing. And the king required one thing to attend the wedding banquet. And the one thing he required was wearing the wedding garment, which he also really provided for anybody who attended the wedding banquet. So there was the king cruising through the wedding hall. And he was pressing the flesh. He was doing the meet and greet. I came upon this one guy who sat there who refused to wear the wedding garment. And the king looked at him, and the king asked him, how in the world did you even get in here without wearing a wedding garment? And the man said, nothing. And then the king realized, the king realized why that guy refused to wear the free wedding garment provided by the king. And the reason he refused 
as you and I consider this parable of money banquet, because you and I have faith, we know what's going on. We know by faith that the king is actually the heavenly father. The son is the son. The first guests that were invited twice were his people, the Jews, and most especially the religious leaders of the Jews. We are the second group that were invited, the Gentiles, the Christians. We understand that the wedding banquet is what we call holy communion here in time, and the ongoing wedding feast that takes place in paradise, even for all eternity, for the faithful. And that wedding garment. The wedding garment is the light that is a robe of righteousness that we received when we were baptized. The righteousness of Christ. So now it comes back to you and to me. When you and I were baptized, it was the Good Shepherd who fulfilled the words of Psalm 23. It was the Good Shepherd who called us and chose us to be his, one of his sheep. It was the Good Shepherd who led us back to cool waters so our soul could be restored as he gave to us the gift of saving faith so we could walk the paths of his righteousness for his name's sake. And our God provided everything. And our God gave to us the best of the best of gifts. The gift of saving faith in Jesus as Lord and Savior and Redeemer. The gift of forgiveness of all of our sins and all the sins committed against us. They died when Jesus died upon the cross. God does not remember them anymore. So you also need not to remember them anymore because they don't exist. A new man, the desire to want to live a God pleasing life, the promise of eternal salvation, and the white robe of the righteousness of Christ. This white baptismal robe of the righteous of Christ is a really important robe. It's really important because it's the robe that must be worn before you take Holy Communion. You've got to be baptized before you can partake of Communion. It's also a really important robe because this is the robe that you and I are going to wear in paradise even for all of eternity. The white baptismal robe of the righteousness of our Lord and Savior. as Jesus speaks to us, he also shows us our sins. Can't help but notice how big refusals are in the parable of the banquet. So now we go back to the first group of people that were called twice. And they refuse and the excuse they gave was time. Don't have time, Lord. Have farms to farm. Have businesses to business. Have places to go. People will see things to do. Got money to make. Sometimes we too, even as God's people, that are hard to make time for the Lord. Sometimes we just get too busy. Lord, I'd love to have daily devotions with you. I'd love to have you speak to me through the word. I respond by praying, praising, giving thanks, but you know, Lord, I just don't have time. You get it, Lord. You understand, don't you? Lord, I'd like to be in your house on the Lord's day to remember the seventh day of holy and receive the best and the good gifts you have to offer to the word of sacrament. But Lord, you understand, don't you? I'm just too busy. And farms to farm, and businesses to businesses, to business, got money to make, too many places to go, too many people to see. You understand, Lord, don't you? I got no time for you. Interesting thing about time and God. There may be times that you and I don't have enough time for God. There is never a time God does not have time for you. To listen to you. To understand you. To help you in your time of need. The second refusal came with the guy who refused to wear the wedding garment that was provided freely by the king. Because of the hardness of his heart. Because of his stubbornness. He wanted it done his way, not the Lord's <coughs> way. He wanted it done according to his will, not the Lord's will. Oh, we all have the same flesh. We're all like that too, aren't we? My will be done, Lord, not thy will. I want it done my way, Lord, not your way. We all have the same flesh. Me and every one of you. Every one of us. So we look to our Lord and Savior 
find our God making promises through the prophet Isaiah. He promised, on this mountain, I will destroy death. On this mountain, I will destroy the shroud that covers all people. And the shroud that covers all people is sin. You sin. I sin. Everybody sins by thought, by word, and by deed. And so the mountain is Mount Calvary. So Jesus went to Mount Calvary to put death to death replaced with resurrection and new life. To conquer all of sin with all of his righteousness. To conquer all of Satan with all of his love. So that you and I can have life and forgiveness and salvation. As we look at Jesus dying upon the cross in Mount Calvary on Good Friday, we find the best of the best, allowing himself to become the worst of the worst. He took all of sin and all of Satan and all of death upon himself. So he could conquer them. So you and I, who are the worst of the worst, can become in Christ the best of the best. So that you and I, as you and I look at the cross and empty tomb, you and I look at the death and resurrection of Christ, you and I get a glimpse of insight of what the best of the best actually looks like. Now it comes back to you and to me. It was Mount Calvary that led to Mount Zion. Mount Zion is where the Christian church exists, where the baptized and the faithful are gathered together, focused upon our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, surrounded by angels and archangels and all the company of heaven. Mount Zion is where we find the divine service, heaven on earth. This is where we find Mount Zion, and this time and place and space. So you and I remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. You and I come to the Lord's house on the Lord's day to receive the best of the best of gifts that only He can give to us through His Word and through His sacraments. We come here to be filled up with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who is the best of the best, because He's the one who brings out the best of the best. We come here on the Lord's day to be in the Lord's house, to be in the presence of Jesus, the Good Shepherd, so you and I can hear the old familiar voice and the old familiar words, so that you and I can hear how he sees us, his people, the baptized and the faithful, who have paid to him as Lord and Savior and Redeemer. And he says words like this, you are mine. I chose you, I redeemed you, I called you by name. You are mine. And because you have faith, you are numbered amongst the best of the best. You are one of my hidden treasures. You are the pearl of great price. You are the royal diadem in my crown. You are my most precious possession. You are, are the best of the best. You who have faith, you who wear the white death as a robe of the righteousness of Christ. And as we come to the Lord's house on the Lord's day, it is our Lord who holds out before us this wedding banquet. We call it Holy Communion in Time, and Paradise is called the Ongoing Wedding Banquet. And as you and I partake of this awesome meal that our God provides for us called Holy Communion. It is partaking of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the best of the best. It is a fulfillment of the promise that God gave to Isaiah in the Old Testament lesson for today. As you and I partake of Holy Communion, we partake of the finest of foods, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ joining his body with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ joining his blood to the wine. And as we partake of Holy Communion, the biggest gift that God gives to us is the gift of forgiveness of sins. Being totally washed and cleansed and purified of all of our sins and all the <laughs> sins committed against us. Being totally and completely
regenerated, transformed in body, spirit, mind, and soul, becoming a new creation in Christ. Partaking of his reconciliation that St. Paul talks about in the epistle lesson for today, so you and I can be at peace, totally at peace with God, totally at peace with ourselves, totally at peace with our neighbor. So you and I can be fully restored as children of the Heavenly Father. And as you and I partake of the Blessed Sacrament of Holy Communion, we do partake of the best, the very body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That which has lived a perfect life, that which has died upon the cross, that which has resurrected from the dead, that which provides healing for body, spirit, mind, and soul. And it's only for us as Christians. It's only for us who are the faithful. It's only for us who wear that white death as a robe of the righteous of Christ. It's not for the atheists. It's not for the unbelievers. It's not for the Jews. It's not for the Buddhists. It's not for those who are Muslims. It's for you and me, God's holy people. And as we partake of holy communion down here on earth, we also are then partaking of the communion of saints. Communion means to be joined together. So we're united with those who are partaking of the ongoing wedding banquet in paradise for all of eternity. It all began with Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, didn't it? There was Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. There was the very tree of life, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And every day they would have eaten fruit from the very tree of life, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And as they ate of the fruit, they ate the flesh of the fruit, and they drank the juice of the fruit. Eating and drinking of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, way at the beginning, way at the start, even before Adam and Eve, fell into sin. And the next place we find the tree of life is paradise. The ongoing wedding banquet for those who have been called home before us. And as we partake of Holy Communion, we are united with them and they are united with us. The communion of saints. And what that means for you and me is you and I don't got to wait to die to be with those that God has called home before us. Those who don't the best in love with us. Grandma or grandpa. Mother or father. Husband or wife. Son or daughter. Or best friend. Every time you and I partake of the Blessed Sacrament of Holy Communion, we are connected to them and they are connected to us, to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Because we are all the body of Christ. What a wonderful and awesome blessing and gift our God has provided for me and also for you. And only our God provides this gift. No other false God on the face of the earth claims to provide this gift for his people, but our God does for you and for me. The best of the best for the best of the best. What an awesome God you and I have. The God who is above all of the God.